Never waste your time arguing with a foolish, narcissistic person. You are just wasting your breath. And you're creating a very unnecessary situation that doesn't need to happen. And not only that, but God says that you're basically a fool yourself if you engage with a fool, period. When you try hard to get them to see the errors of their ways, when you desperately try to get them to see things from your point of view, that what they're doing is wrong and you're trying to express how it's making you feel, it's a waste of time. The narcissist is never going to change. And the foolish person, more often than not, cannot change. And if they can, you're going to have to just let them figure things out for themselves. Your many words is not going to force any sort of change in them. And when you tell people the unadulterated truth, a lot of the times they're just going to hate you even more than they already do. Paul said to the church of Galatia when he put them on blast and he was expressing to them the, the error of their ways, he said, have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And this was to Christians in the church that he was addressing. And we're talking about unbelievers, fools, narcissists. So how much more do you think you should leave these types alone? Stop stressing yourself out trying to get these people to change. You will only find peace when you just let them go completely. And you'll realize that you never had to deal with them at all in the first place. This is a huge relief. Most of the time, these foolish people out here, they're not wholeheartedly deceived. There is evil circulating on the inside and they like living in a lie. They're relishing in it. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Your soul is actually in danger when you're in the mix with these foolish people. And this message is for the preservation of your soul. Because a fool has no delight in understanding, but only in expressing his own heart. Truth for them does not resonate like it does with you. They don't yearn for it like you do. They're just waiting for you to be done so that they can talk. They're just waiting to talk so they can express their own foolish opinions. And you can poke holes in whatever they're talking about or whatever nonsense that they believe in that they're explaining. And it's very obvious that they are in complete error. But they don't care because these people are lovers of self and they're only interested in hearing their own voice, not the truth. Notice how a lot of people don't like it when you talk. They interrupt you. They're always talking about nothing, filling the airwaves with their nonsense so that you can't even get a word in. And then when you get the opportunity to talk, they cut you off immediately or they look uncomfortable. They don't want you to talk because they're scared of the truth that you'll bring to the table and they don't want to face that. Because when you speak, it's a different frequency because it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through you and it elevates the frequency of the whole entire environment. They don't want to have to operate on that higher level of truth because demons start to manifest to the surface when they go there because their demons can only function on a lower plane where deception is taking place so that they can hide. When you speak, it pushes them out of their hiding places. So they want you to shut up. They want you to feel like what you have to say isn't important. That's why they don't like it when you talk. And people will gang up on you, they'll bully you, they'll gang stalk you, or they'll just be plain old passive aggressive towards you to suppress the truth that you're trying to bring to the table. They will humiliate you, make you feel stupid or silly, when the whole time what you actually were talking about was correct. 
It was the right thing to say in that moment. You were speaking from the spirit of truth. You brought forth wisdom to the table, but they never wanted you to realize that so that you stop doing it. It's convicting them, but really you're just trying to help them and you're just being yourself, but they don't want to be helped. And this is what you need to catch revelation about that. They don't want to be helped. It could be your own child. It could be your parents, your brother, your sister, your best friend, your husband, your wife. There's nothing you can do for them sometimes. And you just got to let them go. It's really the only thing you can do. It's the only option. But a lot of times in the heat of the moment, you're just not realizing it. Jesus said, do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother. You see, this is just the facts about what you need to learn how to deal with for the times that are to come. It's just the reality about the days that we're living in. You need to accept that reality. If they're not perceptive to the truth or correction or all of the concerns that you're trying to bring to them, you got to keep it moving. Because if you're representing the truth of the gospel, you're living in love and you're projecting that to them with your actions and your lifestyle. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You will know very distinctly what people are worth working with and others that are a complete waste of time. If you're always casting your pearls before swine, if you feel like you're getting worked up over the way people are acting out here, your love is in danger of turning cold if you keep engaging with fools. I get it. People are disturbing. It's even more of a reason to distance yourself from certain ones. There is an element of preserving your own love that needs to be happening here. And when you give yourself away flippantly to every fool that needs your help, you know, usually they have ulterior motives going on, you are at risk of becoming cold hearted like them because the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil and a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. If you keep saying the wrong thing, whether that's repeatedly extending a helping hand to someone who can't be helped, whether it's engaging too long in discussion with someone that doesn't want the truth, or whether it's revealing too much information about yourself to someone who wants to manipulate you, you will not have joy until you learn how to respond the right way. And sometimes the best response is absolutely no response at all. He who has knowledge spares his words and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. You can't be out here getting worked up. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. You see how this works? You keep engaging with them. You keep trying to get them to understand certain things that you have an understanding about. Maybe you're one of those outspoken ones that don't back down from a challenge and you want to challenge these wicked people for the way that they are. Maybe you're trying to hold someone accountable for their actions. Don't get me wrong, there is a time and a place for that. But an ungodly man digs up evil and it's on his lips like a burning fire. And you're just adding more fuel to the fire of their wickedness when you continue to engage with them. You have to understand that there is absolutely nothing good that will come out of a lot of these situations with people. They are 100% stuck in their ways. You're just being a catalyst for more evil, more aggression. You're just giving them a reason to keep spewing their mouth and everything hidden in their wicked heart to come to the surface. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And you're just asking for all that to be manifest when you keep giving them more words to work with. Do not correct a fool or they will hate you. They're just going to hate you. 
And that's why the best response is almost always going to be no response. Don't even put yourself in a position to where you're going to have to respond to a fool in the first place. At this point in your journey, you should be positioning yourself for these types of interactions with foolish people to not even be happening at all. You should be focusing on safeguarding your heart and your soul and protecting your peace at all costs. If you don't have peace, then you really have nothing. And I get it. Every once in a while, no matter what you do, you find yourself in a situation where you got to deal with some idiot. I get it. Sometimes attacks happen and troubles find you no matter what. But in no way, shape, or form should you be consistently dealing with these types of toxic, foolish, demonic, narcissistic people on a daily basis. You should not be. If this type of thing has become routine in your life, then it, there is something seriously wrong with the way that you're moving out here. Or you absolutely have to escape some sort of living situation that you're stuck in as fast as you possibly can. There's no reason why you should be allowing anything to be disturbing your peace on a daily basis. You simply don't deserve that. And it was never God's will in the first place for you to live like this. It is honorable for a man to stop striving since any fool can start a quarrel. Are you starting to see the bigger picture here? Not only do you not have to subject yourself to any of this nonsense, but God in his word is actively telling you to disengage, move on, find another way. Because what you're doing now may not be working at all because you're doing it the wrong way. And it may never work. It only gets worse. Sometimes you got to make a big move to completely turn your life around and never look back. You will thank yourself later and realize that you should have done this a long, long time ago. You still have a lot of life left, a lot of purpose left to live. It's best that you finally get started because a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Pull yourself out of the line of fire of all these foolish people. Let these fools destroy their own souls because they're going to do it one way or another. It's best that it's not at your expense. You don't want to be collateral damage for these people out here. It does not have to involve you. You are not selfish. This is wisdom. And God has now made a way out for you officially in Jesus' name. God bless you all, and I'll see you in the next video.